Tom Kondulyak, Jade North, Paul Collar and Wayne Shroy from the Olympic Sharks all took time out of their regular routine to relax some weary legs and reflect on their impressive finals form at Sydney's Brightonly Sands. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's been a good uh, last couple of weeks. Here's an opportunity, Tommy Kondulyak! Scored a couple of goals and uh, yeah, hopefully this week we can... Um... Well, I can cap off another another game by, by getting another goal and hopefully we can get the result and get a win. A win will see Olympic in their first grand final in 12 years. But they must first overcome a desperate Newcastle United and their parochial home crowd. 25,000, it's going to be unbelievable. Hopefully we can get that. It's the last couple of years we've got knocked out in this game last year and last week's game the week before and just can never get to the grand final so hopefully this week this year's our year and that so everyone's going to be totally 100% committed and I think the boys have got the squad to do it. The Sharks have coped with injuries all the way through the final series. First it was Troy Halpin's groin and now Jade North has a problem of his own. Oh, it's not too bad, it's a bit dodgy at the moment but um, should be right by the weekend. I've got a bit of an injury, um, South Melbourne game. Uh, my knee, um, been off it all week, I've been taking it easy at training. Um, just got to, oh, Gary's given me to the last minute, sort of, to, to give me the all clear. Fortunately, North and Halpin have survived the week and an unchanged Sharks lineup has been named. Former Socceroos star Steve Labert was available for selection, but surprisingly, Gary Phillips hasn't even named him on the bench. A real feature of this encounter will be the one on one matchups between Olympic's young back line and Newcastle's speedy forward line. Paul Kohler highlighted schoolyard buddy Joel Griffiths when asked who he'll be marking come Sunday. Most likely my old mate Joel. Um, grew up with him playing football. Um, I've marked him a few times before, so I know his game. I think Gary will put me on him. I think most likely Jade or Jerani will be on Sal Massey. They're both quick, so we're going to be on our toes, but hopefully. Our defence has got us through this year, so hopefully we can do the job and come out with a win. Unfortunately for Newcastle, Robbie Middleby was again unavailable due to that lingering hamstring strain. Ian Crook has therefore named the same team that defeated Perth 2-0. Despite Joey Shripper being declared fit, he'll now take his place on the bench. We now head to Energy Australia Stadium where your commentators are Mike Cockrell, Paul Wade and Andy Harper. Still making its way through the turnstile. A lot of talk during the week that we will get over 20,000 people here today and that would be a record soccer crowd for the city of Newcastle. Gary Phillips, the last time the Olympic Sharks made the grand final and won the championship, he was in the engine room of their midfield. These days, of course, he is the man guiding the Sharks towards perhaps a repeat performance. Jeremy Harris, two goals in his last two starts. How important has that been for the Sharks? With their top scorer, Ante Milicic, still carrying a niggling injury. It's two informed teams who meet this afternoon. It's a big occasion. And the man in the middle, Simon Mikolev, one of the most experienced referees in Australia. It's going to be the Sharks to get the game underway. Olympic in their away strip of all white. Newcastle in their red and blue. Elpin. Looked to have his shirt tugged by Sikhenis, but the referees played the advantage. What a run this is from Troy Halpin. The save made by Goltrame. And the covering was there from Scott Bailey. Troy Halpin brings the game alive. Eight minutes into the game. Olympic. Very, very confident in the early exchanges. Kante Juric has moved forward for this corner. Swung in by Pondliak. North. Off the base of the post, eventually it goes in, Ante Milicic. Milicic has opened the scoring in the preliminary final. Certainly an element of luck about the goal. It won't matter, the Sharks with the dream start. Well, it was untidy, wasn't it? But that's what, 10 goals now in 10 games for the Olympic Sharks. Most expensive footballer in this country. We keep saying it week after week, and that's why. $110,000 he costs the Olympic Sharks. He's there or thereabouts. Not exactly spectacular every week, but there he is inside the six-yard box. Goal 1-0 Olympic Sharks. And poor old Travis Dodd doing his level best there. The ball just stuck under him. Pondelyak swings it in. Juric 
Looking for the header. One by Sakenis instead. Juric has stayed down. He's fallen heavily. Kohler, still Juric down behind play. And Dodd, hoping that one would go over the line. Beltrame does the sporting gesture. Juric in a lot of trouble. Bad news this for Olympic. The shoulder, by the looks of things. The collarbone, the shoulder, not exactly sure the actual injury, but we'll have another look at the incident here. Sakinis and Juric going for the same ball, and Juric just fell very heavily indeed. And he will certainly have to go off for further treatment. That would be a body blow for Olympic if they do lose such an important defender. The Sharks with the only goal of the game, but with a big problem at the moment over Ante Juric. Blagojevic slides it into the feet of Moriera. Massey does well to turn away. Find the space. Here he is again. Pushing forward Roberts. Oh, Newcastle sense that this might be their opportunity against an undermanned opponent. Here's Prentice. And his shot takes a deflection. Peels for handball. In the end, it needed a lunging interception there from Paul Kohler. Moriera was sniffing around the goal. Newcastle starting to find their feet now. So Newcastle with their first corner of the game. Whipped in by Blagojevic, flicked on. Messi couldn't turn on the shot of Salah Messi. Uh, better stuff that from Newcastle and it looks as though Juric will now resume with his right elbow heavily strapped so that is the problem not the shoulder it's the elbow you just wonder in the circumstance how long he'll be able to continue though we rejoin the first half action at Energy Australia Stadium where Newcastle trail by one goal your commentators are Mike Cockrell, Paul Wade and Andy Harper. Cool defending there from Bingley. Dodd plays it long. Here's Griffiths with North on his shoulder. And Jay North and going for the ball may have clipped Joel Griffiths in the face. That is the reason for the free kick. But Newcastle have a free kick in a promising position. It's Blagojevic over the ball. Four blue shirts in the middle. Massey! What a save from Bolton! He knew nothing about that from Bolton. Somehow the ball stayed out. So much power in that header from Asala Massey. And the Sharks riding their luck. Off the post, off the goalkeeper, and over the crossbar. As the Sharks now will make the change, and it's going to be a sorry looking Ante Juric who makes his way off the field. Hiroyuki Ishida, this outstanding left sided player from Japan, will come on to the park. There will be a reshuffle for the Sharks. Again, Podoliak takes the corner. Massey uncontested. Plays it up towards the halfway line. Packer. And the ball has somehow found its way through to Harris, who just didn't get enough time to take a shot. And here goes Dodd. The first time we've seen him getting forward, but Ishida, good covering tackle. Massey goes down. Packer dived in, and the referee wants a word. Newcastle want to play on. But Simon Mikulev will bring back the play. He was right on the spot there, Mikulev. Out comes the yellow card, and Olympic are furious with that decision. But it will not change the outcome. Well, I was sitting wrong side. This is the side I saw it from, and I couldn't see it. Well, I'm not quite sure. He didn't have the stud showing. There was no intent to hurt anybody. I thought it was a clean tackle. He won the ball. And his teammates backed him up on it. He's very unlucky, Andy Packer, to get a yellow for that. I thought that was very rash refereeing from Simon Mikulev. Dodd with the header. Prentice helps it on its way. Dodd has stayed down as Milicic gets a shot on target. Straight down the throat of the goalkeeper.
Dodd. Chips it towards Scott Bailey. Griffith squares it. And Matthew Beanley. His shot goes across the face of goal, but you can see the confidence starting to build among these Newcastle players. It's taken them a while to settle into their rhythm, but the signs have been encouraging over the last 10 minutes or so. Still with Andy Roberts. Crosses a deep one. Dodd arrives late. Clearance from Ishida. Ishida gets the better of Travis Dodd on that occasion. Blagojevic, Newcastle now controlling possession. Bailey. Well, Scotty Bailey, a defender who always fancies himself when the goal is within range. And he's played a lot of his football as a striker. And he's probably still a frustrated striker in many ways, Scotty Bailey. It was a reasonable effort from some 20 metres or so. Newcastle United have had the bulk of possession over the last 10 minutes, but they haven't really done enough with it. Massey. Good defending there from North. Massey has support in the form of Bingley. The ball into the middle. And here's Dodd. Well, he may have been better advised to just try his luck then, Travis Dodd. You can hear the home fans starting to make the noise that uh, players want, the players need. Bolton organises his defence. It's an awkward one here for the goalkeeper. Looking directly into the sun. Blagojevic chips it into the near post. And just the wrong side of the goalpost. But it's now about commitment, dedication, determination. It's not necessarily about football ability. No, there's no doubt about that. It's, well, as we always like to say, you know, just get it in the mix. Show some passion. Griffiths takes a shot. That's it. It was a disappointing effort from Joel Griffiths. Newcastle United top goal scorer has been rather subdued so far in this game. Well, it's a scrappy affair which at the moment favours the Olympic Sharks. Beltrame's come a long way off his line there. The goalkeeper didn't get anywhere near the ball. And here's a chance of Lausanne for Milicic. Danger here for Newcastle. And Milicic has fired just wide. The goal was at his mercy. That could have been the killer blow for Newcastle. And Ante Milicic knows it as well. Well, a few ex expressions exchanged there on the Newcastle bench. Ante Milicic had plenty of goal to aim at. Well, Newcastle seemingly happy to just play the ball around in their own half. They don't have too much time left to get something before half time. Blagojevic. Moriera. Still with Moriera. And Bolton in the end makes the save. Well, he has risen to the occasion, Clint Bolton, over the last couple of minutes or so. Have another look at that incident. Moriera getting the better of his opponent. He was trying to cut the ball back to Roberts. Uh, Bolton was perfectly positioned. Here's Troy for Olympic. Looking down the line for Wilson. He gets the better of Roberts. Lindsay Wilson. It was the right option from Wilson. There was no one in the middle. He took the shot instead of the cross. And he wasn't too far away. We now return to Energy Australia Stadium for the second half of the Newcastle Olympic clash, where your commentators are Mike Cockerell, Paul Wade and Andy Harper. The stage is there for the players to deliver. Chance here for Moriera. 
still with Moriera. Messi is unmarked. As Salah Messi has blazed over the top. That is the chance that Newcastle have been waiting for. As Salah Messi, perhaps with a bit too much time. Newcastle United should have been on level terms. Set up for him by Alex Moriera. The Sharks defence ripped apart. But Asala Messi unable to punish them. Griffiths. That's good play from Podoliak. He's given the ball away and the referee has ruled a free kick to the Sharks. And that was for the first challenge by Joel Griffiths. Simon Mickliffe trying to play the advantage. There was none. And it'll come back for a free kick. With Sweden, his most likely destination. And the Sharks, well, they've taken too long with that free kick. And it's the unfortunate Andrew Durante who gets booked. And the bad news there for Durante is that that card will keep him out of the grand final. A hammer blow for Durante, who eventually plays the free kick forward, and that will play on his mind. Wilson wants it to the right. He comes inside Roberts. Ball rebounds for Shroy. Harris holding off his man. The touch from Harris let him down. Newcastle have it back. Zakenis starting to play in a more advanced role. Messi is one out, though. Moriera gets over the top of Cola. Moriera squares it. Zakenis. He took too long, Peter Zakenis. It was an open goal. Well, Newcastle United, the free kick is gone to the Sharks. That is the opportunity that you need. That is the opportunity that you should convert. Peter Zakenis, for some reason, took a split second too long to get to the ball, and that was all the Sharks needed. The chance goes begging. Well, maybe you were thinking of Asala Massey's miss a little bit earlier, but I think you've got to pay a lot of credit to Wayne Shroy, who tracked back 30 yards to make that sliding tackle. I don't know whether he got too much on the ball, but he certainly scared the living daylights out of Peter Sakenis there on screen. It all ended up in a real mess, and another chance gone begging for Newcastle. So still Newcastle United looking for their first goal of the match. And they've had a couple of chances. Bingley, now with Roberts. This time Newcastle have numbers in the box. Needs a good ball, but it's not. Cross from Andy Roberts, too close to the goalkeeper. The Sharks, though, have a corner. Played short by Pondliak. He gets it back from Owens. Now with Shroy. And Olympic create the opening. It fell for Greg Owens. And he forced a save from the goalkeeper. Well, opportunities there. Sorry, Mike, for Newcastle. Two occasions the ball fell for Joey Shriver. Here's a third. Get yourself to the byline, son, and get a cross in. Whipped in by Sharipa. No communication there between Kohler and Bolton, but the fortune favoured the Sharks. And now Tommy Podoliak inside is Milicic. Danger here for Newcastle. Milicic has squeezed it past the keeper. Fantastic defending from Matthew Bingley. That was the killer goal. They've had their chances, the Sharks, to finish the job. Bingley denies Ante Milicic a second goal of the game and a goal which surely would have secured a place in the grand final. Fantastic work from Matthew Bingley. Well, they got it right at last, Olympic. A good, a good option taken. Everything right. They just didn't count on Matt Bingley on the goal line, the captain of Newcastle. He's kept his team alive. And only Matthew Bingley now back in the defensive half for Newcastle. They have thrown everybody forward. Don pumps it in towards McBreen. He wins it over the top of Massey. It's taken Newcastle a long, long time to get going in this game. Gary Phillips has not sat down the whole match. Very nervous customer. We are about to go into stoppage time. 
And the Sharks just keeping possession in this corner. Close to the sideline. Four minutes, according to the fourth official, will be added on to this match. And if the Sharks have anything to do with it, most of those four minutes will be spent in that corner of the field. Newcastle desperately need to get their foot on the ball and apply some pressure on this Sharks defence. Well, it's at this moment in football matches, you realise your, your season is ticking away. The players are looking at each other, the players in blue, that is, hoping for some inspiration, a bounce of the ball, a flick on, someone to anticipate something. The reality is approaching them. The season is dropping out of the bottom of the time glass. The boys in white are looking at each other as well. They're looking to muster the courage that's going to get them through the next three and a half minutes and into the grand final for next week. Here's Owens. And, well, all the bounces are going the way of the Sharks at the moment. They've had about six or eight throw-ins on this near touchline. And every time they get a throw, there's a few more valuable seconds wasted as far as Newcastle United are concerned. Massey. Troy has done well. Podliak switches play. Wilson with an acre of space. Wilson. Inside is Troy. His shot takes a deflection. Almost finding its way past the goalkeeper. It was Greg Owens who I think got the slightest of touches. And that is a poor kick from Beltrame. And North just happy to see it over the line for yet another throw. Newcastle cannot string two passes together. Two minutes of time added on. Here's Sharipa. Massey. Massey cuts it back. Well, Griffiths just couldn't get there. Beltrame. One by Sakenis. Bailey has stayed forward. Now Pondeliak. Here's Wilson. Credit to Lindsay Wilson. Still finding the energy to find the space. Wilson again. And now the ball at the feet of Newcastle United. Griffiths. Griffiths tries to take on Packer for speed, but Packer is too quick and too strong. Play on, says the referee. Griffiths back to his feet. Jeremy Harris is back in his own penalty area for the Sharks. They can smell it, Olympic. The grand final is almost within reach. Here's Massey. Griffiths gets the ball into the middle. Durante clears it. Corner to Newcastle. Maybe the last throw of the dice. What a brilliant last dish defending from Olympic. Newcastle finally around asking some questions. This will be the last action for sure. Beltrami makes his way into the penalty area. Blagojevic drives it forward. McGreen gets the contact. And cool as you like, Clint Bolton on his line takes the ball. And there is the final whistle. Olympic are into the grand final for the first time in 12 years. The season is over for Newcastle. Delirious scenes among the Newcastle, I should say the Olympic players, Gary Phillips. The Olympic Sharks go through to their first grand final in 12 years. Newcastle are out, but certainly not disgraced. Olympic played, came here and they played well. They defended great, especially after losing their experienced players. Uh, we had a couple of chances just after half time, but couldn't take it. And to their credit, uh, they came away with a win. Well, I'll ask you the same question I asked Andy. Was it tough to come up against uh, a second week in a row? You did so well last week against Perth. I, I don't think the, the boys dropped a bit at all. I think the boys worked well during the season and during training this week. And uh, I think Olympic got what they wanted early and then uh, they just sat on it. And that was a great thing for them. You know, we've been talking about it all week. You know, if we get one up, and just keep working to the, for the full 90 minutes. And, uh, you know, as long as we kept, 
committed to what we had to do and did our jobs properly, we were fine. Every, both teams did so well last week. Was it so tough to come up again and perform like that? Yeah, definitely. Very tough. I mean, we've, um, we've played, you know, three games so far. You know, now the fourth. So, I mean, it, of course, it was going to be tough. But, um, I mean, when you look at it, all the stats, we're pretty even both sides. So to come away with a set piece and a win was perfect. And your change of position, you must have hated that, didn't you? You were looking forward to playing out wide. I was looking forward to playing out wide. But, um, you know, what can you do? I was happy to sit in there, you know. I mean... You know, what can you say? It was just awesome. I don't mind having to sit in there if there's a job to